Welcome to this video where we're going to look at some of the learning options open to you and give you a powerful demonstration of one of them. So far we've looked at some of the challenges facing students that include the consequences of last minute cramming and too much emphasis on forcing information into their brain instead of more time exercising their ability to recall it. We have also explored some key facts about the brain and things we can do to improve our ability to learn. So what's next? Well, there is no doubt our schools, colleges and universities provide some of the best education opportunities for our young people today. They are full of highly qualified and well-trained teachers who understand the topic and how to teach it really well. Now, what is needed is for students to be prepared to take advantage of those opportunities. The ability for them to be able to learn, understand, think about and remember the knowledge they have been exposed to are key skills every student needs. What is clear through our research and the work we have done with hundreds and thousands of students of all ages up and down the country is how easy it is for them to grasp how to use their minds far more effectively with just a few easy to apply techniques. These techniques include using mind mapping to not only learn and remember knowledge but also to understand it, think about it and apply it. Memory techniques, including an amazing memory system that is thousands of years old, yet still has huge value, relevance and impact in the modern day classroom. And another that not only helps pupils remember sequences and key concepts, but also stimulates their creativity. Developing an understanding of different learning styles and how to maximise their approach to match their preferred method of learning. And of course, there are also a range of tried and tested study skill strategies the most successful students have been using for years. But let me give you an experience and the power of one of these techniques. Now, don't adjust your video. What you see on the screen has been deliberately blurred out so you can't see the detail of what is there. But you can see enough to get a feel for just how much is there. So here's a question for you. How long do you think it would take for you to go through the amount of information you see beneath the blurring to be able to recall it with at least 90% accuracy? Well, in the workshops we run with students, the answers typically range from a couple of hours up to even a couple of days. So whatever answer you have in your mind, just keep a mental note of that. Now, let me talk you through a mind map about Marco Polo. So Marco Polo went to China when he was just 17 years old. It was a long journey, it took him three and a half years, and also because it was 5,600 miles away, 5,600 miles. Now, he didn't go on his own, he went with two people. He went with his father and his uncle. That's his father on the left and his uncle's on the right. And they crossed a very dangerous desert called the Gobi Desert. Now, when he got to China, there were three things he found fascinating. The first was paper money. Now, in China at that time, they had paper money, but in Europe, they only had coins. So he thought that was amazing. The next thing was coal. They were using coal to heat their houses, cook their food. Now, that wasn't available in Europe at that time. So he thought that was fascinating. And finally, there was the postal system. They had relay runners, relay riders. They had a first class, a second class and an imperial class. And he thought that was fascinating, too. Now, he loved China so much he stayed there for 17 years. Now after 17 years there he decided he would come home. Now he came back by boat. Quicker journey took him two years this time and 600 people traveled with him or 600 people who did travel with him died on the way back. Now the emperor gave him a golden tablet which acted like a passport and if he showed this whilst he was in the Chinese Empire he wouldn't be harmed. And finally when he got back Marco Polo wrote a book about what he experienced during his travels but because it was so amazing so different to what Europeans were used to nobody believed him. More about his life this was over 700 years ago. When he got back he lived in Venice and married, had three daughters he died when he was 70, and because he travelled so much, he spoke four different languages. OK, so let's see what you can remember about that. How old was Marco Polo when he went to China? Yep, he was 17. How long did it take him to get there? Yep, three and a half years. How many miles was his journey? 5,600. Who did he go with? He went with two people. They were his, that's right, his father and his uncle. What was the name of the desert he had to cross? Yep, it was the Gobi Desert. And what were three things he found fascinating about China? The first was yep, paper money and yep, coal. And the last thing, yep, the postal service. Now, how long did he stay in China for? Yep, 17 years. How did he get back from China? Uh, by boat. How long was his journey? It was quicker, remember? It was only, that's right, two years. Now, how many people died on the way back? 
Yep, 600 people died. What did the emperor give him for his journey? Yeah, it was a golden tablet. And what did that mean? That he wouldn't be harmed in the Chinese empire. What did Marco Polo do when he got back? Yes, he wrote a book. Was he believed? No, he wasn't. Now, where did he live when he got back? Yes, he lived in Venice. Roughly speaking, how many years ago was this? Yes, it was about 700 years ago. And how many daughters did he have? Yeah, he had three. How many languages did he speak? Yes, he spoke four. And finally, how old was he when he died? Yes, he was 70. Now, I suspect you were able to answer many of these questions, if not all of them. And remember, it only took me a couple of minutes to share the mind map with you. So here's a question for you. Think back to when I showed you the blurred text earlier. How long would you have given yourself to go through that amount of text to get the same result? Well, you see, the text you see on the screen is exactly the same information that was on the mind map, just in written form. This is the power of mind mapping and is a brilliant example of how just a few simple shifts in the way we usually do things can yield some quite stunning results. The look of complete and utter astonishment on the faces of the students we work with when we share similar examples is a sight to behold. We have shared these ideas with well over a million students in several thousand different schools across the UK in the last 15 years and we'd love to work with you and your colleagues as well. So get in touch with us now by calling us on 0844 809 4850 or email us at info at And let's see how we can help your students harness even more of their potential.